became rich, very rich. When Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam declared his prophethood and invited people to Islam, he was one of those who accepted Islam. Then he concealed his iman because it was not the right time to say, "Hey man, hey guys, I'm a Muslim. You will be beaten up. Maybe you get killed." Then when Allah ordered the believers to migrate to Al Madina, he went waited while he was leaving Mecca. The Meccan spies told the Meccan disbelievers and chiefs that Suhail is migrating and is leaving Mecca. They chased them and they chased them. And when they were about to capture him, he said, "What do you guys want from me?" They said, "Look, when you came to Mecca, you were broke and poor, and now you made a lot of wealth in Mecca. Do you think?" You can just get away with it and get our money and leave. He did not steal it, though. He worked hard for it. But they say, if you want to leave Mecca and join Muhammad and make it wrong, then you gotta leave all your money for us. That's a deal. And he immediately accepted giving up his entire wealth and giving it away. So that he can join Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a Medina. The price is very expensive. Somebody will be stripped of his entire wealth. When a singer or an actor or a dancer, they accept Islam. The first challenge that face with is, you know, that this career is not permissible. You cannot be a dancer and earn money out of that. So I got quit, and after I was very famous and big celebrity, now I become an ordinary person. But yes, because you will be an icon before Allah, not a celebrity before people. So there is a price that comes along with that. The Sahaba will be may Allah be pleased with him. Told the Meccans, well, here is my money. Take everything and let me go. So they accepted the offer, and they stripped it off of his entire position. Then he migrated to Al Madina, barefoot, had no money whatsoever. He took away his money. Allah Almighty informed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam about this great sacrifice. So once Suhail arrived to Al Madina, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam received him with warm welcomes. And say, "Rabih al Dayr Suhail, Rabih al Dayr Suhail." Successful indeed is your trade, O Suhail. He made a trade with Allah. He gave his wealth and position in order to earn what Allah's pleasure and enter paradise. Somebody might think from whatever I said that. For accepting Islam and becoming a believer, you gotta expect a lot of trouble. It is true in a sense the believers have to be tested, but it is not like any trouble that people encounter. It is a trouble that we find it very pleasant and we enjoy it. What? Yes, because it is for the sake of Allah. Ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy on him, one of the great Muslim scholars, was tested, was imprisoned for so long he even died in his prison, and he produced to us a beautiful collection of books that, if a whole community is working for 20 or 30 years, they will not be able to produce it. He wrote them in his prison, in his confinement. Salat al Isal. He used to write the answer on the wall of the prison with a piece of chalk. Almost more than 30 volumes that he also out of his mind in his prison. Ibn Taymiyyah was tested several tests and trials. So he made his very important and famous remark by saying. What do my enemies think about me? What can they do to me? By putting 
me in prison, thank you so much, because I believe this is some sort of privacy. I get to study and I get to worship Allah without being in trouble with people. When well, they exile me, thank you so much, this is similar to tourism. I get to see other lands and meet other people. So he takes the shot of the test and trial and he takes the best out of it. Many times one would like to spend time by himself. So he looks at the prison as well, as long as it is for the sake of Allah, not for a crime I committed, not for committing theft, not for a murder, not for an evil thing, rather for Allah, then it's a pleasure. Being exiled and kicked out out of my home and stripped out of my mouth and deprived from seeing my family for the sake of Allah, no problem. What is the worst? Worst come to worst. They're gonna kill me? Then if they kill me, I die as a shaheed, as a martyr. And that too is for the sake of Allah. And once the shaheed dies, his soul goes to him immediately. So he really teased his enemies and bothered them. They went crazy. They didn't know what to do with him. Same thing with the believers, the true believers everywhere. What are you gonna do to us? If Allah is on my side, then I'm a winner. He cannot take a man out of my heart. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as an example of how he was tested and how patient and steadfast he was sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Before he was appointed as a prophet, at what age was he told that he's a prophet? Forty, right? So for forty years, when he was living in Mecca, people loved him so much. People trusted him more than they trusted anybody. When he was so young, they used to deposit their valuables with him, say, Muhammad is a sadiq, he's an ameen. They gave him those titles, a sadiq, the truthful, because he never made a lie. He never lied. An ameen, the trustworthy. So he was like a bank for the Meccans, if anybody has some valuables, they know where to keep it. Go to Muhammad and keep it with him. When they fought over reconstructing the Kaaba and who take the honor of putting the black stone in its place, they are about to kill each other. And who saved them from that? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was only 35 years old with his wisdom. But when Allah appointed him with the Prophet, and he climbed the mount of a sofa and he called on the Meccans, who they recognize him as the most truthful person, the trustworthy one. And they would not call him by his name anymore, rather they would call him As-Sadiq, Al-Ameen, the truthful, the trustworthy, because of his ultimate truth. Now he climbs on a sofa and gathered the Mecca. Oh people of Mecca, I have very important news for you. Allah is one and He appointed me as a prophet to succeed Jesus and Moses and Abraham and Adam. They did not let Him finish. You are a liar! What? Abraham? For 40 years He knew that He is a truthful one. Not because He said something true that you do not like it. He accused him of being a liar. Some people after shock, after math, they say, you know that Muhammad is not a liar. So we have to say something that can convince people not to follow him. Somebody suggested, what well, I got it. Then we have to propagate and say in the media, Muhammad lost his mind and he's insane. When he started receiving the Quran and reciting the beautiful verses, they had a meeting, the chiefs, and they say, you can never say he's an insane anymore. Why? Because the Quran which he recites is the most beautiful word. It is amazing. The disbelievers admitted though that the Quran is amazing and it is the most wise word. But we have to find another allegation. Then he must be a soothsayer. Or he's a writer. But you know that Muhammad is illiterate. He doesn't even know how to read not to write because when he was orphaned, he was not lucky enough to go to school. But as a matter of fact, he was lucky enough not to go to school. This is a proof that he's an illiterate, but he is the one who is the biggest teacher. 
because Allah is the one who taught him to teach us. Then, let's just say that he's a, a poet or a, a shair. Shair? But he never said shair or poetry in 40 years. He doesn't even know how to. So, allegations, false allegations started falling on him one after another. Why? Because he said, Rabbi Allah. And he is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the most beloved to Allah, and the greatest prophet, and the greatest teacher ever. The one whose intercession will be accepted. The one who no one will enter heaven before him. But he was tested. He was tried. He was struggled, but all of that, as long as it is for the sake of Allah, no problem. With pleasure. Because Allah Almighty promised for every trouble that we face, there is a great reward. The severer is the test, the greater is the reward. Bilal ibn Rabah, the Mu'adhan, who was a black Abyssinian slave. Once he accepted Islam, his master, and uh, the Meccan chiefs brought him to persecution along with the weak believers. They put him in the desert and they used to keep him all day long under the burning sun and again is the burning sand and they put a huge stone or rock on his chest that he cannot even breathe. Because as long as he was free, he used to say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. So he wanted to torture him so that he would not even be able to breathe, let alone say a word. So while he is encountering difficulty breathing, he used to say, Ahadu, 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 One. One is one. There is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are our ancestors and our forefathers. The great companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who have been tested and tried. The Quran tells us more and more and more about those tests and trials. And we can just talk in one more story in order to understand that if Allah tests you, it does not mean He dislikes you. Nor does it mean that you're bad. And if Allah gives somebody all the wealth in the world, it doesn't mean that this person is the luckiest person. Qarun was at the time of Musa Allah gave him plenty of wealth. The Quran describes his wealth as follows. When we had a safe, in the past they didn't have digital numbers. So they had to have a key for the safe to deposit their values. That the keys of his safe and boxes which contain the jewels, the diamond, and the gold and silver, the keys were put in boxes, and the boxes were more than 10 people to carry. The boxes of the keys. So you can imagine that many keys would open how many boxes contain valuables. He was the wealthiest person on earth, but he was a disbeliever. And he would like to show off before the believers and tease Musa alayhi salam and walk in pride in his own clothes and tell the believers, I made all of that because of my intelligence. I'm genius. And look at your man, Musa is a prophet but he's poor and poor. So people started envying him and they said, we wish we were as lucky as Qarun. Do you know what happened? Same day that he showed off and he was teasing the believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the earth to swallow him and his palaces, his homes, his servants, his businesses, his wealth. They woke up in the morning. What? What? What's wrong? There was a huge palace here. There was a sanctuary here. Qarun used to live here. And his army and soldiers were here. His businesses, his farms, his cattle, gone. Totally gone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused him to, th to sink. And he will continue to sink until the day of judgment. Oh my goodness. That simple? Yes. Because his richness and his wealth 